It is Wednesday, the third day of January 2018. Hello there and welcome to News Tonight. My name is Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. And I'm Patricia Lokoma. Thank you and so much for joining us. And this, of course, is News Tonight. Patricia, welcome to the new year. How did you start your year? Well, I guess everyone, just like anybody else, we all started worshipping and praising the Lord on the 31st. And that's the day that ushered us into the 2018. That's very nice. I, I think everybody, most, most Ugandans started the year, of course, in church, praising God and, of course, thanking him for, you know, taking them through the, the old year, 2017, and beginning this one, uh, 2018, before his presence. Now, let's get started with our news. And uh, the Vice Chancellor uh, Makere University, Professor Benabas Nwanje, has instituted a committee headed by Professor William Bazirio to investigate uh, the report released by the Visitation Committee on uh, the university. During a press conference, uh, Nwangwe said the committee is to come out with a comprehensive official response not later than February this year. We have details. Macquarie University Professor Banabas Nwangwe has inaugurated a committee to investigate findings of Macquarie University visitation report. Yes, by His Excellency the President, I have decided to appoint a committee to draft the formal university response to the report of the visitation committee, making a formal response that will be discussed extensively by the university community, the university management, and provide it to the university council, which shall make a formal submission to the Honorable Minister of Education and Sports. This, as guided, will contribute to the white paper development process. President Yorim Museveni appointed a visitation committee in November 2016 to study the cause of persistent strikes and financial woes at Makere University with a view of providing a lasting solution. The report found out, among others, inadequate financial management, procurement, assets and grant management, hence financial loss to the university. Areas of immediate implementation, because the committee identified areas that can be implemented almost immediately but some are of a policy nature and that responses must be studied properly and the responses must be appropriate the report also found out discrepancies between the number of students on the Macquarie university registrar and the ones head counted by the committee at least 65 percent of Macquarie university students were substantiated during the head count the committee also discovered that 16,000 students were uncounted for during the head count. I'm Navka Farida and Gloria Gwitaminji reporting. Thank you, Namfuka Farida. There now moving on into Parliament. The Clerk of Parliament, Jen L. Chivedige, has communicated resumption to a plenary to MPs marking the end of Christmas and the New Year recess. This started on 20th December 2017 following the passing of the Constitution Amendment Act 2017, which, among others, lifted the upper age limit for presidential candidates. Now, Parliament's uh, Director of Communication and uh, Public Affairs, Chris Obore, uh, confirmed the development but added that uh, the order paper will be decided upon uh, by the Business Committee that is chaired by the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga. Whereas the business uh, to be handled remains unknown, the national budget for the financial year 2018-2019 is expected to take centre stage. Now, members of parliament are also expected to scrutinize the biotechnology and biosafety bill uh, that President Yerim Seveni reverted to members of parliament for further consideration. Of the debate here is to give opportunity. I have been informed by the clerk that the parliament resumes on 9th this month, January, that will be on Tuesday. So all members of parliament are requested to 
to resume the house. And uh, the other paper is not set out because that one is a changing, a changing uh, process. It can be concluded the day before or the same day the house sits. But uh, this being the budget time, uh, the budget process is the most significant right now. To have the MPs pass the budget as per the Public Management, Public Finance Act. Yes. But there will be other business, but the budget is the main, main, the main activity. Is our right? That has been the Director of Communication and Public Affairs uh, at Parliament, Chris Obore, of course, confirming uh, the development there, of course, uh, uh, that is uh, about uh, uh, the order paper that uh, will be decided upon by the Business uh, Committee, and of course, that one is chaired by the Speaker of Parliament. Natural. And we're now going to go for a short break, but there's so much more lined up for you. Do stay with us. Welcome back from that short break, and this is uh, News Tonight. My name is Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. And you're still with me as well, Patricia Lukoma. Moving on now, uh, High Court Judge uh, Margaret Ouma Oguli has dismissed a suit by six opposition members of parliament who had sued Speaker Rebecca Kadaga and the Deputy Attorney General um, Mwesigu Arkutana over their uh, suspension. And in the ruling read by Deputy Registrar Joy Kabaje, the judge said that she lacked jurisdiction to hear this case being a constitutional matter. We do have details. High Court Judge Justice Margaret Ouma Oguli has dismissed a case filed by six members of parliament against the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga. Last week, court summoned both the Attorney General and the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, to appear in person for the hearing which was slated to begin this Wednesday. High Court Deputy Registrar Joy Kabaje, who read the ruling, explained why the case was referred to the Constitutional Court. This court is of the considered opinion that this matter before it falls squarely under the interpretation of the Constitution by the Constitutional Court. Both sides have been asked to meet their own costs. However, the applicant's lawyer, led by Arias Lukwago, promised to respect the ruling. They say they are going to take more legal action regarding the issue. These issues that require for, I mean, that would be demand for a constitutional interpretation under Article 137 of the Constitution. Those issues must have arisen here. But now, where are those issues to be forwarded to the Constitution? Because what we are seeking for are judicial review orders. We call these prerogative orders. Members of Parliament, led by the leader of opposition, Winnie Chiza, were also not happy with the ruling, saying they were not given attention. High Court had the mandate to give us that review. Now that they think it's about the Constitutional Court, the Constitutional Court is within Uganda. Earlier on, some people alleged to be NRM supporters were also seen outside court premises displaying placards condemning the move by the six MPs to take the speaker to court. UBC TV managed to talk to some of them who were in defense of the speaker, Rebecca Kadaga. The six suspended members of parliament are Ibrahim Semujunganda, Gerald Karuhanga, Odu Jonathan, Mubara Kamunyagwa, Akol Anthony, and Alan Sewanyana faced suspension last year during the age limit debate due to their behavior. Susan Naonga and Deborah Namamonde. Well, and in other stories, managing disabilities among children goes with enduring and becoming discomfort as therapy comes with a lot of pain. However, limited funding and therapy machines pose a challenge in providing corrective surgery and physical rehabilitation. 
Executive Director Adina Foundation Lira Elizabeth Alanyo calls for parents to embrace government interventions in ensuring the safety of all children. The top details. Adina Foundation is an organization that provides therapy for children with disabilities. Give a Little Love is the song that welcomes one to the Lira Best organization, which is complemented by welcoming songs from these children. Our teachers, you are really, you are really welcome. Our teachers, you are really welcome. These are just part of the 1,300 who have gone through physical therapy through corrective surgery since 2010. Those ones that we bring here are majorly people who need like surgery, those ones who undergo surgery, and then we have those who undergo general physiotherapy cases. The provision of physiotherapy and assistive devices is as aching as it is painful, for which they have no choice but to endure. I was so mad. I felt badly, but um, here I felt good because they are treating my wound clean. They have taken me to the hospital. They have operated me well. Under surgery cases, we have people like with post-burn contractures. Those ones, once we admit them here, we open a file for them. After opening a file for them, we take them to a hospital at um, Entebbe. It's called Koso. Going through this unbearable pain in the long or short run enables them to walk and perhaps live again, depending on the injury level. We have children with different conditions. Among others, we have children with club foot, we have chronic osteomyelitis, we have those with post band contractures, we have those who have like uh, congenital deformities. <laughs> In an area whose environment is similar to that of a school setting, success of this rehabilitation also depends on social factors. It is the very reason why they are subjected to social games, including playing football. When you go in your home, people will tell you that I have only four children when they have five, but that one with disabilities in the house, they never, people never see that no one knows, except the people, few people in the neighborhood. There are those ones with uh, cerebral palsy that have never crawled, they've never sat, they've never walked, they just lie down. And if you left them in one spot, you go wherever you're going and you come back and you find it there until you move. This is before going to bed to rest in a setting similar to that of a school dormitory. We have orthopedic cases handled on Thursday at Kosu and then the plastic surgeries are done on Friday. They meet the surgeons on uh, Friday. But lack of sufficient therapy machines and limited funds poses a challenge in ensuring effective treatment. It is here that their partnership with comprehensive rehabilitation services in Uganda, also known as COSU, is brought to light. Club foot or club feet is also one of the conditions that we handle at COSU, and then post-injection paralysis. Elizabeth Aliano wishes to have independent capacity to handle all cases. If we had our own home, then we'd have enough space to bring in more children. If we had our own home, uh, that means buying land and constructing. We could even have our own theater here so that we bring the doctors that are working at COS to do it here. But maybe if we find a way, there has got to be a solution. Adina Foundation was founded as a charitable non-government organization in Uganda in 2009. It was aimed at meeting the urgent need for holistic rehabilitation services for children with mobility disabilities in northern Uganda. Henry Okrut, UBC. Adina Foundation, of course, addressing the plight of children, and thanks so much, Okrut, for that uh, story. Patricia, we're going for a break now, and we'll return with business. Do stay with us.
Welcome back from that short break and this is News Tonight here on UBC TV. Let's talk business now and Uganda's worry about investment opportunities will soon become a thing of the past uh, following a new advanced advancement by Xeno Technologies that seeks web-based solutions to key economic issues. Now, Zeno Technologies founder and chief executive officer Aeko Ongodia says Zeno is the answer to the how and where should I invest my money. Now, using the Zeno platform, people can invest uh, for various financial goals uh, such as retirement, wealth, education, housing, emergencies, and so much more. We have developed a solution to a problem. But let's define the problem. Most people do not have access to professional investment guidance when making investment decisions. So they end up doing things that they see their friends do. They follow the latest facts or things that their parents, brothers, sisters, mothers have done which might not necessarily be optimal for their unique situations. So, we've taken an approach where we help people, first of all, identify and articulate why are they investing? What are their unique circumstances? How long are they investing for? What are their attitudes towards risk? What is their investment knowledge? This is all information if you pay it expensively for advice from a financial advisor, they would ask you these questions in order to learn what your, your circumstances are. And then based on your circumstances, they make a recommendation. This is how you should invest for retirement. This is how you should invest for your child's education. Quite likely, the way you invest for retirement and the way you invest for child's education is going to be different because you're going to invest for a child's education at most 10 years, for example, while retirement is 20, 30 years out. The way you invest for those two different things is going to be different. The way you invest in order to find emergencies is going to be different. The way you invest in order to generate income is going to be different. So we've taken a, the process involved in advising an individual how to invest and automate it. Welcome back, and this is News Tonight. Let's talk some uh, sports news now. And we begin with the Uganda Cranes, uh, who are headed for Turkey ahead of the Chan tournament that's slated uh, for the 11th of this month, of this month rather, in Morocco, uh, February this year. Now, the squad of 25 players held their last training session at African Bible University, where they have been uh, camping before flying off to Turkey. We have more on that in this report. Again, the national football team, the Cranes, has gone to Turkey in preparation for the fifth edition of the African Nations Championship, due for Morocco beginning 12th January to 4th February this year. Uganda Cranes head coach Sebastian Dusabre named the 25-man squad who are being prepared to represent Uganda in the Chan tournament. The team will have build up matches in Turkey against Congo Brazzaville and Cameroon, where the tactician will assess and name the final 23 players according to CAF regulations. However, the Frenchman says his selection of players is mainly based on those individuals who fit in his philosophy, style of play. He's, uh, he's very short, he's very quickly because. Uh, uh, we have a, a big competition to uh, to prepare, but uh, for the moment is uh, it, it's ni it's nice. Okay, I, uh, now I know the the players, the names, the face, <laughs> the players, and uh, we we start to put my uh, my rule on the on the field, and uh, I think it's very it's very nice to to go in camp in out uh, outside the country to uh, to work in the on the cohesion. Also, second tuka. Nicholas Wadada, Shaban Mohammed, Ismail Watenga, and Milton Carissa 
are some of the Cranes players who made it on the team and are optimistic they will put up a good fight during the competition. This is a difference in the way the players are looking at this tournament. We have uh, confidence that uh, Mia was, uh, got a chance to, to Europe through this tournament, so it rings in everyone's mind that it can also be our chance. Secondly, we have the motivation of the new coach, who we feel he has, we are adapting to him. Uh, most especially when you're going for a tough tournament like this, yeah, you have to be, uh, to be mentally and physically fit. So I'm well prepared. For we are getting used to the coach's tactics and he plays attacking football, so I think we're going to be creating many chances and we'll get chances to score goals. Intense fight training drills. The team is finally set for the Chan tournament in Morocco. But what does this mean for the new coach? The new coach has been brought in. He has to deliver results for the Ugandans to gain the confidence. However, the coach has named a young assertive team, which is going to make Uganda proud. For UBC, Helen Barbara here in Luvoa. Helen, Barbara, Gizamba, thank you so much for that uh, report there. And of course, we expect Uganda Cranes uh, to at least now compete with other stronger teams on the continent now that we've got a coach who actually seems to know what he wants from uh, these lads. Let's talk basketball now. And the belated 2017 National Basketball League men's playoff final is scheduled to start this Friday with reigning champions City Oilers at facing Kampala International University Titans. Now the men's final was uh, for the second year running postponed because City Oilers had to represent Uganda on the continent where uh, they ably did finishing fifth out of 12 teams. John Ban Sentamu reports. Kampala International University Titans has gone through its paces at the MTN Arena Logogo in readiness for the belated 2017 National Basketball League final in which reigning champions are City Oilers are the opposition. Federation of Uganda Basketball Association's officials are optimistic the final will be worth watching. Uh, what we intend to do is that after the final game uh, of these finals we shall have um, an award ceremony for the finalists of, of that game and the ones uh, for, for the other divisions. And we shall recognize the ones that we are unable to give uh, trophies or whatever, but will still receive the recognition. City Oilers will look to players like Jimmy Enabu, Landry Nikuman and Steve Omoni, while Kampala International University expects Sudu Ulanga, Geoffrey Soro and Jimmy Omanye to hit the right notes. We have the game starting on Friday the 5th, then we play the 7th, the 10th, the 12th, the 14th, the 17th and the 19th if in fact we end up playing the seven games of the seven game series. Whereas Oilers will be looking for its fifth consecutive crown, Kampala International University Titans are playing their maiden final. John Burns, St. Amu, reporting. And on the international scene, Africa will crown its best soccer player on Thursday. But the electors have a tough choice in deciding between the three candidates for the 2017 Africa Footballer of the Year Award. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang of Borussia Dortmund and Gabo goes up against Liverpool's Senegalese uh, Saido Mane and Egyptian Mohamed Salah with none of the final three candidates having a defining achievement over the last 12 months uh, to set them apart. Now the winner will be announced at the annual Confederation of African Football Awards being hosted in Accra, Ghana. Oba Mayang, who was the first African Footballer of the Year in 2015 and runner-up in the last poll to Riyad Mahrez, finished as top scorer in the Bundesliga last season, netting 31 goals. Mane and Salah helped Senegal and Egypt uh, respectively to qualify for the World Cup after lengthy absences and have emerged as leading players this season in the English Premier League. And of course, as we wind up this bulletin, it's been a wonderful evening. However, uh, Patricia, let's uh, talk about uh, 
uh, Mr. Trump, and of course, uh, the Palestinians now ganging against him, and of course, that's in relation to Jerusalem and his, uh, his comments about that city. But of course, when we look at uh, the, the situation of uh, Palestinians and, and Israel, this has, long, has been a long overdue conflict between uh, these two states, and of course, the decision of Trump making uh, Jerusalem the capital city of Israel is quite overwhelming, but is this, the de the de is this a decision that will bring a lasting solution to the conflict and that have been going on for mm. quite a Actually, long time. Are, they, they are just saying that, you know, with what Trump is saying here, yeah, probably there's going to be bloodshed, of course, now there were some skirmishes already, you know, uh, in Jerusalem itself, and they're saying this is not uh, what we need because the Palestinians mm. regard Jerusalem as mm. their place. Israel also says this is our place. So, um, uh, and the, inter the, the international community is saying, hmm, Trump, whatever you said, this may not work out very well for, yeah, true. for both and the, Israel and the and UN Palestine. Is, is stepping out of it. They, they're not having a hand in this. Uh, so basically, let's see how it turns out mm -hmm. as we get more updates on this. Yes, and uh, with that, we've finally come to the end of uh, this bulletin. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on board. I'm Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. And I'm once again Patricia Lokoma. It has been a pleasure as well. Have a For blessed now, night. For now, we say goodnight.